Hey everybody, welcome to Home Recording Made Easy in Plugin Review Sunday, where every Sunday I show you a brand new plugin. We walk through its feature set and I show you how to apply it to a mix so you can make better mixes in your home studio. Okay, before we get started, if you like what you see in this video, please consider subscribing and make sure you hit the notification bell and also stick around to the end of the video because I have a free gift worth about $210 to help you make better mixes in your home studio. So stick around. Okay, everybody, welcome. So this week on Plugin Review Sunday, we're gonna take a look at the Plugin Alliance um, Lindell 80 channel strip, which you see right here on the screen. This is a Neve channel strip. We're gonna listen to this on a couple of different sets of instruments, maybe some guitars and some drums, and walk through the plugin and let you guys check that out. And you can always demo this at the Plugin Alliance website. So here is the Lindell 80. And so it's a pretty simple plugin to use. Again, it's, it's a Neve. It's got that Neve vibe. So let's walk through the layout of the plugin here. Now this uh, session that we're going to uh, be listening to it on is part of my live mixing series. If you don't know what live mixing series is, go ahead and look in the description box below. You can find out all about it. Um, and you can follow me on YouTube where we mix a song live as a YouTube live stream. All the links will be in the description box. So left hand side of this plugin. We have our two meters here. We have our in and our output meter here and you'll see these two little red lines here uh, for the inside and the, and the outside. Um, next to that, we have our compressor gate, gain reduction here, meter, okay? Underneath that, we have our preamp section. This is a 1073 preamp modeled. We have our little THD for total harmonic distortion, which adds a little bit of grit, a little bit of uh, color to our signal. And here is our preamp here, our, 1080, our 1073 preamp. And what's great about this is um, you can go ahead and have a 20 dB pad switch where a lot of times what I do, like I did on this session, is I'll pad it down 20 dB, the signal, and then I'll crank up the preamp a little bit to make up for that, to push some signal and get some coloring from this preamp. Next to that, we have our Unity button. And what that does is it allows, when you click the Unity button, it's gonna, it's gonna go ahead and it's gonna level the volume. So when you get to the output, you have the same volume uh, coming in and out of the plugin, which is a cool feature. Next to this, we have our EQ. Now we have two EQs in this particular plugin. We have our um, 1073 uh, EQ here and the 1084 by clicking that button. The difference between the two, and I'll show you in a second, just a couple extra features on the 1084. On the uh, 10, uh, 1073, we have our um, our filters here, our high, our high cut, our high shelf, I should say. I think it's a uh, 12 or 15K, which you can go plus or minus 16 dB. Okay, under that we have our mid frequencies here. Now this is a two-stepped uh, kind of a dial here. If it's, you can see it here on the bottom, we have all, this will be off and then we have, it's a stepped frequencies, 360, 700, 1.6K, 3.2, 4.8, 7.2, okay? And then on top we have our plus or minus 18 dB. Okay, so that's the way this works and that's the way it is on the console. Um, underneath that, we have our low frequencies. Again, we have it, have it at off. We have uh, 35 hertz, 60 hertz, 110, 220, and then again, plus or minus 18 dB. We have our filter section down here in blue, our low cut filter, okay? And then we could turn the EQ section on and off separate from the filters, which is kind of nice. Next to this, we have our compressor. At the top here, we have our wet dry mix for parallel compression. We have our side chain high pass filter here as well. We have our threshold, our ratio 1.5 to one, all the way up to six to one. We have our makeup gain, and then we have our recovery or our release time. We could turn the compressor on and off here. Our attack time is either a slow attack or a fast attack by clicking this button here. Even at its slowest attack, it's still pretty fast. Um, it's not a super slow attack, but we have fast and faster, think of it that way. We have our nuke button, which will kind of do an uh, over compress it and smash it to death, good for, uh, good for um, parallel compression, okay? The next to that, we have our gate section here, where you can turn the gate on and off here, and you know, all the usual suspects of a gate, um, all the controls here, we're not using it on this particular um, session. And then above this, we have um, what's unique to these, to the Plugin Alliance channel strips, they all have this TNT inside. And what this basically does is they've modeled different physical channels on a real console because every one of those channels has different circuitry, different components, different tolerances within those components and they all sound slightly different. And so you can choose 
where you could have, you know, if you have these across all of your tracks, like we do, you can have different channels modeled on each one of your tracks. So for example, this is the kick drum. I have it on channel one, but I can easily put it at channel two, channel three, channel four. It's going to have some subtle differences between the channels. You can also hit this little one button up here, and this is going to randomize it and just give you kind of a random um, for this particular channel, or you can random, you can randomize all of the instances of the plugin across your entire session. So what I typically do, and you can also just double click in here and type the channel number. This happens to be the one on the kick drum, which is track one in our session. So I have it on track one. Okay. If I were to open up, if I did this right, track snare would be track two. Okay. And then if I came over to my hi hats, we could put that on track three, so on and so forth, okay? So when you first put the plugin on, it's gonna to default to one. So if you wanna do this, you gotta go ahead and change them manually, or you can hit, like I says, you can hit the random button. And again, what are the differences? Audibly, is it really obviously noticeable? No, it's very subtle from track to track. Now this is a stereo channel, this overhead channel. So this is gonna be on channel, oh, we can, uh, let's see, we could, oops, sorry four, five, channel six, seven. And then I'll put my rooms, I believe are stereo as well. Yes, and I can make that uh, seven, eight. Oops, eight, nine, okay. Um, and that's how you would use that. Now, there's two parts to this plugin. There is the one that you would put on all of the individual tracks themselves. And then on the buses, whether it's on your bus, in our case, our drum bus or the master out, you also have the second part, the bus part of the plugin as well. So these go on all your buses and you have a little bit of a total harmonic distortion control, a trim pot here and a master fader, and then you have your inputs and your outputs. And again, you can also change this. So if this is our drum bus, uh, one, two, you can do three, four, five, six, that kind of a thing. So this part of the plugin goes on your buses and your master out. This part of the plugin goes on your individual channels and that's it. Okay, so now let's, uh, first thing I'm gonna do, now this is already a semi-mixed song. This is the actual session that we're using in the live mixing series, as I talked about a few seconds ago. Um, and so we, as part of that, we've already done the drums, the bass, the guitars. So I'm not gonna change all the settings, but I want you to hear it, what it sounds like on and off, how it actually affects the sound. So if we just solo up our drums here and listen, and what I'll do is I'll shut off the, just, I will shut off just the channel strip. So this is what we have, and I'll shut off it on the bus. This is what we have just for drums. Before the channel strips. I'll turn this up a little bit so you can get a little bit more volume. Now I'm gonna bring it in. Okay, yeah, that's after. Again, before. Now what I'll do is I'll level match this a little better on the bus. I'll turn it out, turn it down a little bit on the bus. Okay, so it has that very um, Neve kind of sound, real big open top end that has a, and a lot of, it, as well as a lot of bottom end. So if we just take a, list, a look at like on our kick drum here, I'll just show you some of the settings. So on all of the drums, I went ahead and used the 20 dB pad switch so I can push the preamp a little bit. So this is our kick drum. You can see our gain reduction meter here, about two or three dB of gain reduction. So on the EQ side, I just added a little bit of 60 Hertz for some bottom end, that was it. On our compressor, we did a two to one ratio with a fast release, slow attack, if you will, and we're compressing a few dB with just by lowering the threshold, and that's really it. And our snare. Same thing, using the 20 dB pad, pushing the preamp a little bit to use some of that color, also turned up some of the total harmonic distortion. On the EQ side, I use a filter at 80 Hertz to do some roll, low end roll off. Um, at 220, no, no, excuse me, at um, at 360 Hertz, we took out a couple of dB, and then at 12K on our shelf, we added a couple of dB to give it some crack. On the compressor, two to one ratio, once again, fast release, slow attack. 
couple of dB. Okay, and then I'll just show you the overheads for the drums. So the overheads, we have a stereo version of this because it's a stereo track. Once again, um, I pushed the preamp a little bit. I didn't lower the dB pad on this one. 80 uh, hertz uh, roll off. Um, let's see, at 360, I took out about 4 dB and I added a little bit of crack at 12K. Again, compressor, same settings, two to one ratio, fast release. This is the overheads now. And you can lower the threshold if you want more compression. We weren't really compressing it all that much. Okay, so that's what it sounds like on drums. Let's listen to this on maybe uh, a bass guitar now, just so you can get a feel for a bass is gonna be a little more subtle. And I'll turn this up a little so you can hear it. Okay, so let me just turn it off here. This is before. After. So once again, using some of the preamp. Um, on the EQ side, we're doing a, lo a low cut filter at uh, 80 hertz on this because it was really boomy sounding. Um, and then we took, at 700, I added a few dB, okay? And then um, on the bass, we did a, a faster attack. We did a little bit slower of a release, four to one ratio. And we're compressing about five dB. Before. After. Okay, and then lastly, we'll listen to it on an organ just because why not? We're here, right? We just loop this organ sounds. Same thing, pushing the preamp by using the pad. Um, on the EQ side, 360 took out about 3 dB, um, did a low cut filter at 80 hertz, and a little bit of a shelf here, just a couple of dB. Um, threshold, uh, or excuse me, the ratio, four to one ratio on the compression, fast release. How much uh, gain do we have? A couple of dB of gain reduction, a little bit of makeup gain. That's before, after. So now let me bring in those, uh, let's bring in the drums and let's do drums, bass, organ, and we'll do before and after. Before. After. So there you go. So it's, uh, you know, it's got that Neve vibe to it. And so if you don't have a Neve channel strip in your arsenal, this is a good one to have. There's not a lot of companies that make Neve emulations. Um, Universal Audio makes the 88RS, which I have, which I really like. This sounds different from that. It's a different type of console. Um, also, Plugin Alliance makes, um, I think, a version of the 88RS as well. Um, again, it'll sound different than this. This is another kind of a Neve flavor, but I'm a big lover of channel strips and I think this is a good one. Um, and I've reviewed all of the Plugin Alliance channel strips, SSLs, Focusrite, the Neve, so on and so forth. You can check the uh, links in the description box and you can check out the playlist and check out all of their channel strips. Most of their channel strips that I have all sound great. Um, and if you love mixing with channel strips as I do, this is a good one to have. You can check out current pricing on their website. I'd say go demo it. This is really good and I do highly recommend it and I'm glad that I have this in my collection. So I hope you uh, enjoyed a look at this, uh, quick look at the uh, Lindell 80 series. Great plugin, check it out. Now, thank you for staying until the end of the video. I really appreciate it. As I said, I wanna give you a couple of free gifts. The first thing I'm gonna give you is I'm gonna give you a coupon code. Coupon code is YouTube20. That is YouTube 25. You go out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com and you can take 25% off any one of my training courses. Go ahead and do that today. And I also want to give you, if you're someone new to Home Recording Made Easy, go to homerecordingmadeeasy.com. I want to give you five free 
mixing training courses worth a couple of hundred bucks, five free courses just for visiting homerecordingmadeeasy.com. And while you're there, check out all the different training courses I have on the training courses page and use that 25% coupon. So those are the things I want to give you today. I want to say thank you for sticking around till the end of the video. Now, last but certainly not least, I want to know if you use uh, channel strips as part of your mixing, whether it's this particular channel strip by Plugin Alliance, or do you use channel strips in general? If you do, leave comments below and let me know what channel strips do you use? Do you like mixing with channel strips? Do you not like it? Have you ever tried it before? What are your thoughts? What things are you interested in? And if you've not tried channel strips before, I urge you to do that. And again, leave me some comments below. Let's start a conversation about channel strips because I do a lot of mixing with channel strips and I love turning people on to them. So if you're new to it, this will be really, really cool. So until next Sunday's plug-in review Sunday, I've been Dave with homerecordingmadeeasy.com. Make sure you give me the thumbs up. Make sure you like and subscribe and make sure you hit the notification bell. Leave comments below. All the links for the pertinent information is in the description box below and I will see you next Sunday. Take care.